So the other day I went on a charter fishing trip, not as a fun trip, but as a first mate. And we did some deep dropping down for bee liners or more common terms, vermilion snapper. And I don't really have a full video of that. I got some clips which I'm gonna roll here in a minute. I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. We caught quite a variety. Um, but I thought, why not make a video showing the different kinds of leaders or rigs that we use when we go out and drop for red snapper, grouper, or those uh, vermilion snapper. And just kind of give you guys insight on why you would say use one rig over the other, um, what conditions or situations are better. And yeah, I have a couple different I'm going to show you guys. But before we get into it, I am going to roll the clips. Now keep in mind, this isn't summer. This is super late season, so... The fishing is not exactly super hot as it can get, but we did catch quite a variety of fish. So check it out. This is actually a red snapper. It is not season right now, but we can get a picture. You want to hold them up? I can snap a pic of you if you want. Yeah, I got the rod. Fish, kingfish, and mahi. Heck yeah. Whenever they're biting, they're big schools. Yeah, you gotta get on them quick. Strawberry grouper right there. Oh, 
All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that quick little fishing segment there. Not quite a stellar day, but we did catch a mixed bag, which is really cool. Caught that random mahi out of nowhere. I mean, it's not summer right now, so I would honestly say that day was pretty dang good, being the time of year we're in. Uh, but yeah, so to start this video out, I'm going to actually show you guys the knot I'm using first. Now, you can use whatever knot you want, but for tying the hooks, like I'm going to do in this video, I prefer this knot because it's super fast and I've never had it fail. So, I typically tie a uni knot to my swivels, just throwing that out there. But for this, tying two hooks, I like to do take your leader, run it through the eye of your hook, wrap it around, make a loop, and then actually bring that tag back around through the eye of your hook. All right, so so far this is what you've got. And you're gonna wanna leave this loop here. Hopefully you guys can see that, but then once you get this, once you get this, grab your tag, and then you're gonna wanna pinch it with the main line here. Just like that, holding it. So you essentially have a double wrapped around loop, and then you're gonna wanna run it through this loop twice, just like a granny knot. Now it might not cinch very well with the line I'm using, but once you tighten it down, it essentially is just a double granny knot once you've wrapped it around the eye of the hook. So there you go. That is my favorite offshore knot when I'm tying on 50 pound mono or more. It eliminates the need for crimps in a lot of situations. And really it's just a faster knot to tie than your standard fisherman's knot or uni knot. All right, so now that we have our hook tied to our line, the first rig I like to use for snapper is the simplest and the least likely to tangle rig. So what you're gonna wanna do is actually run your line through your egg sinker weight, and then run it all the way down your hook. A lot of you guys probably recognize this. This is indeed a knocker rig. So essentially, you're just gonna slide your weight down right on top of the hook there. I like this rig a lot because it is pretty tangle proof. Your hook and line has no chance of going down and tangling with your weight. The weight is right next to the hook and bait. So when it's falling down, you can see there's just, there's no way this hook is gonna come back around and tangle on anything else. The next rig I like is actually the Carolina rig. And uh, just for demonstration, I am going to tell you guys what you do. It's essentially the same thing as the knocker rig, but up your main line, I like to run probably one and a half, two feet of leader. You're gonna cut off your line and then tie a swivel here. And then above that swivel on your main line, you're gonna tie the egg weight. So tie on your swivel here, and then once you put your egg weight on, it's gonna be stopped at that swivel. So with this rig, you're gonna have a free floating hook with your line. The only issue I have with this sometimes is if you let your bait fall down too fast, um, this weight will start to fall faster than your hook. So it'll end up doing this, and then this hook and bait will actually end up getting tangled on your main line, and it will start to twist twist up because of that weight falling and it's gonna be an absolute mess when you pull it back up. Sometimes it gets so tangled up that the fish are not even gonna to wanna to eat it. So that is my other rig. It's probably my go-to rig when I'm snapper fishing. The way to prevent that tangle is to put your hand on the spool or just hold the line if you're using a spin reel and just slow down the descent of that bait. So there you go, that would be your Carolina rig for your snapper fishing. Like I said, put a swivel there. Now another thing you can do if you don't want to use a swivel is actually do this. This is something I do when I don't have a swivel or I'm trying to re-rig pretty quickly. So if you don't have a swivel or you're just too lazy, essentially just run your line through your egg weight, wrap it back around, run it through your egg weight again, and then sometimes if you need to, 
you can run the mono back through and do it a third time if that weight is still sliding. And then once you got that, you can just tie on your hook and everything will be set up so you have a Carolina rig. So we just covered two rigs, two of the most simple and effective rigs that I like to use when I'm snapper fishing. And I'm gonna show you guys one more just real quick. Despite how slow they think they're dropping the bait, we'll still have tangles with this Carolina rig right here. And if you really don't wanna do a knocker rig like this, if you think the fish are not gonna bite it because that giant weight's there, which, you know, it can happen, but every time I've used a knocker rig, I've caught just as many fish on it. But like, let's say you're fishing in a place that has a lot more fishing pressure, I can understand that there. So if you don't wanna use a knocker rig or Carolina rig, the next rig you can do is a dropper loop rig. All right, so for the dropper loop rig, you're gonna to wanna to take your line, twist it so it crosses over and makes a loop just like that. And then you're gonna to want to kind of pull some slack, open up the loop a little bit. And then from here, you're gonna to wanna to hold this top loop right here with your mouth, or I like to use my mouth to hold it. And then with these bottom two lines right here, you're gonna to wanna to twist them five or six times. Once you've twisted it up five or six times, you're gonna to wanna to make a loop. With your twists, and then you're gonna to want to you're gonna make a loop down here with your twist and then you're gonna to want to run this top line through that loop. Just like that. And then you're gonna to wanna to start cinching it down. You can adjust the size of your loop at this point as well. It's just gonna take a little bit of practice if you're new to it. But once you get it cinched down, it should look like this. So this is your line. You'll tie the top up here to a swivel or your main line. And then down here, you'll cut it off and put it onto a weight. And then here with this loop, what you're gonna to wanna to do, run it through the eye of the hook. It's gonna be a little bit hard with this thick blue line. But we got it there. Run it through the eye of the hook, just like that. And then run the hook through that loop. So if you do it correctly, it should come out like this. That is the dropper rig. So down here you'll have your weight and you'll tie it up to your main line like that. A reason I really like this setup is you can have your weight below your hook and then you can drop that bait down as fast as you want and not have to worry about anything tangling up. So honestly, if you have a little more time and you're not being lazy, this one I would recommend the most. Carolina rig and the knocker rig are super fast to tie. There's nothing wrong with them. But if you tie this one right here, you have this little extension from the main line and then you have your weight down here so you don't have to worry about stagging anything like that. It takes a little bit longer in my opinion. Also with this dropper, you get two lines here making it a little bit more durable. It's getting cut off. Now if I had to choose, I'd probably recommend the dropper rig over any of the other ones just because you get this extra reinforcement here with two sets of monofilament. You won't cut off quite as much and you'll have that weight down at the bottom so you can drop that thing down as fast as you want and not have any tangles. The only downer to this rig is it could take some people a little bit longer to tie up and let's say you're fishing for mangrove snapper and you want to have a little more finesse. Having this big knot here and these two monofilament lines running through to your hook, it could be a little more visible than say a Carolina rig where you're only going to have that one. But then again, if you're gonna be fishing for mangrove snapper, you're probably not gonna have a big old weight. I'll have to make a separate video on that one. If you guys wanna see it, drop a comment down below. But those are the rigs I would recommend. But as far as beeliner fishing, what we were doing the other day was actually running two hook rigs. So basically just tying two dropper loops, doing one and then doing another one under it, tied to the weight at the bottom. Just so you can pull in a few more at a time. But if you are gonna be fishing for red snapper, you can only fish with one hook at a time. As far as I know, as of current, so, Try to read up on your regulations wherever you're fishing. That is a video, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you got some value out of it if you hadn't already known about how to tie these rigs. Consider subscribing down below, hit that notification bell. Hopefully we'll be able to get out fishing here again pretty soon, it's just been blowing and it's been pretty cold. So I got my eye on the weather. Once we get a break, I'll head out there. But until then, I'll catch you guys in the next one.